Start. Start. Yeah. At a certain point, the hand can no longer reach over the wall of the pot and get all the way to the bottom. At that point, you will then use the split hand. If you look at the bottom, you'll see that the groove is just barely there. I'm going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to go back to that bottom, push down to the wheel head, and then push into the clay wall. This begins to get the clay to move. I will then take a little water, use my left hand to distribute it. I'll check the water on the inside, make sure it's slick. The split hand pull is done with the left hand and the right hand. The right hand is on the outside and it's used horizontally. The left hand is on the inside and it's used vertically. The two hands aim to touch their middle fingers. It's done at about four o'clock. The arm is now off the left leg. The right arm is on it. The hands go over and the hands brace. If possible, brace the thumb into the top of the index finger. Push in and hold that pressure. Now squeeze out just gently. Hold that till it begins to thin. If it's getting dry, introduce just a little bit of water at the bottom so everything is nice and slick. Go back to where you left off and then begin to gently pull that thinness and make the cylinder taller. As the hand is coming up, it's pushing in and it's also rotating counterclockwise. At this point, the cylinder is basically as thin as you're going to be able to make it and you need to do a little housekeeping. There is an alternate method of compressing the rim which uses the left hand middle finger and thumb which gently holds the rim while the right index finger gently touches it and packs it together. You must also go down to the inside and remove the extra water that's sitting in the bottom. When you hold the sponge, it's important that you have a firm grip. The easiest way to grip it is to use these three fingers with a little bit of the sponge folding over as you go to the bottom so that the sponge will wipe the bottom. Now I'm showing you on the outside at about the position I will be doing it on the inside. So I'll go down and I actually let the sponge drag against the wall a little bit as I go down. If your hand is going to nick the wall, don't worry about it. It's usually just a little bit of a touch and action makes you more stable. Okay, I've dried out the inside. The next step is shaping. There are a lot of different ways to shape. The easiest way for a beginner to begin to understand shape is that it is created from pressures pushing out from the inside, reflected in the wall, and pushing in from the outside, also reflected in the wall. There are two basic shapes that combine to form a vase. One is an outward thrust, the other is a collaring in. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do the, the outward push. You go down with the left hand, the sponge is held either with the three fingers or with the two fingers. You go to the bottom, and again, right here at about four o'clock, and I touch the wall so that I'm stable when I go in. I'll go to the bottom, and the sponge is pushing against the bottom. If you look at the outside shape of the wall, you'll begin to see that the sponge is reflected in the wall. Do not push out excessively. Make the belly of the pot and slowly come up the wall. Hold it when it looks about right, then gently pull away the sponge. At this point, if you look at the pot, you can see basically the whole form is already there. This is a very easy way to begin to make form 
The ridges that you see in the pot are a byproduct of the throwing rings as I'm pulling up the wall. Right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the inside, clean up the inside bottom a little bit. And again, if you look closely there, you can see that my hand chatters, but I don't worry about it. The next step, if I feel that it isn't collared enough, I'll introduce a little bit of water. If you look at the way I'm using a sponge and a hand together, you can see that I'm dripping the water right between the fingers and the pot wall. Four fingers are used, and they begin with a gentle pressure in. Pressure in, pressure in, pressure in, pressure in. Constriction creates a neck or a collar. Belly, collar, and then a flare out to finish the vase off. To flare the pot off, the inside hand goes at about three o'clock. The outside hand is slightly below it and gently you press the wall out to finish the flare for the neck of the pot. Now the pot is just about complete at this point. The lip will need a little bit of refining, which is just a simple pinch between the thumb and the middle finger. A little bit of compression. Use the sponge very gently. Soften up the edges. Smooth out the inner throwing rings. And at this point, it's time to use the triangle rib tool for a little trimming and a cutoff groove. The triangle rib tool is held in the right hand using a hole. You hold it between the middle finger and the thumb on the hole so it's very strong. When you go to trim, you come at four o'clock, you brace the tip of the triangle rib into the fingers of the left hand. Your arms are on your legs. Very, very carefully and gently, you make little line at the base of the pot and then push down slowly to remove excess clay. The clay is scraped off. If you create a funny shape at this point, you may have to come back to the inside and use your hand to expand it. You can also use the rib on the outside. If you want the throwing lines after you've done that, you can come back with your finger and restate the throwing lines. Next step, cut groove. Using a tip of the pot. And you can see there's a little wobble in the pot and the shape isn't quite as nice as it was a minute ago. My advice is just to let it be. Don't try to make it perfect. If you try to make it perfect, a lot of times you wreck a perfectly good pot. And some of this can be taken care of in trimming. Next step, stop the wheel. And we go into the cutoff steps. First, use the cut wire with the wheel stop. You'll do a dry cut. You may cut it twice if it feels like it's really stuck. Then, water on that front side of the wheel, and this is called the wet cut. Frequently, two passes, sometimes as many as three passes are necessary. If you see the pot move as you're cutting it, it's time to stop. Pot removal is done with the pot lifters. The pot lifter is gently slid into the cut groove and goes underneath the pot about a half of an inch. First one and then the other and then a gentle twist and lift. You remove the pot and set it on the board. Push down on the tips, wiggle out the pot lift.